PE, good to see you. Hey, man, I just got the warning that we're being recorded. Yeah, I just hit the button. Nice. How you doing? Pretty good. Good to see you. Yeah, you too, my man. Yeah. Here we are uh, in our uh, respective spaces. I see you've got a kibasa, a cool synthesizer, and a talking drum. I have. I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been working on somebody else's record the last couple of days, so um, nice. I've left stuff out everywhere. I'm very envious, man. You've got a vibraphone behind you. Yeah. It's a student model, so it's a little smaller. It's not the full uh, three octaves, but yeah, it's pretty great. And then uh, a Hammond uh, M3 over here, and my drums are usually here, but they're all packed up right now, uh, kind of moving around this week. So yeah, this is where uh, all the drums were tracked for the call center record. But we, we didn't use any vibraphone. I think I mentioned to you twice. Yeah. Recording vibraphone. And, right and, and, and we just never got around to doing it no i don't know why i i, I think it's probably something for the next one but uh yeah oh, for sure we need to have that coming up on the on the next record so we've just had this single released yeah and i think you've got a session um in front of you yeah well, i've yes. also got some stems cool yeah. So this was the first this 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 track Mad Mark mm -hmm. was the first track that we worked on together. And I kind of like I mean I, I, listen, we've never spoken about this before, mm -hmm. but I kind of like shot you an email or a message on Instagram out of the blue. And we had a, like an exchange of messages and I was like, "Oh, let's make a record." Yeah. Did you did you think that like, this guy's mad or or you know? I mean, what was your thoughts when when I got in touch? Uh, I can't find evidence of this, but I feel like the first time we talked, you asked about my reverb unit. I I looked for that exchange, I couldn't find it, but I thought then you reached out and said, "Hey, you want to make some tracks?" And I thought, "Well, this guy likes the reverb; he must have good taste." So. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought, hey, this guy seems pretty cool, and uh, he's got some good stuff under his belt, so yeah, let's try it out. I don't know why we started with Mad Mark, though, because it's just, it's so oddball, and it's kind of like moving to the uh, the most complicated thing first. <laughs> Doesn't make much <laughs> sense. Yeah, no, remember the uh, best way to start for me, man. What's that? It's the best way for me to start. Just do, yeah. the, do the hardest thing first jump right into it yeah. jump in yeah I, I i remember um sending it to you and thinking like this makes no sense it was just guitar and drums that distorted guitar uh and i thought like if this guy can make sense of this he can do anything and i think you turned it around in like two two days i was just shocked so yeah, I was I was pretty excited to get to get the drums. Yeah, you sent you sent two tracks. There was that one, and there was another track which I, I don't know which one it was, but it was two right. sets of drums. And that was the only reason I started that one first was because that was the first one. That was the first folder that unzipped. Uh huh. So I, I put that in, and I put your drums in and the guitar, and I was like, oh my god, this is like unreal. <laughs> so and you'd sent over like I was really surprise as well you'd sent over like stems of all the the, the, the different we had all the mics you uh -huh. had like a drum bus you had the reverb i was like oh man you know i can really get down with this and um and then worked on it that night you know the, the same night you sent it awesome and i think the following because you're because you're kind of like seven or eight hours behind me by the yeah. time i'd finished working on it you were asleep so then when you woke up there it was you had it yeah and then and yeah i mean it was just it was great to work on. I loved I loved working on that track. Right. Yeah, I love that. And uh, that idea that uh, I could send you something and then go to bed and wake up and there would be a track. It's, it's insane to me. So definitely uh, excited. I was. I remember being excited about how fast it would come together and um, uh, versus, you know, working on other projects in the past that would take years and then you would labor over it. It was just fun. And uh and sort of natural came together naturally. So 
Yeah, really. Yeah, cool. the, the, the funny thing is, right? You think that that's like that track didn't make any sense, you know, in the in the in the form that you sent it with the drums and the and the guitar. But it like made perfect sense to me straight away. So it's really, right. it's it's really funny that, that that you'd say that. I didn't know I didn't know you felt that. It's just the distorted guitar. I, did, I might be able to get the the thing you sent me. Um, nice. So I got that. It's so great. And, I can the other parts. And then I got yeah. So I got that scratch. I got a drum reference, which is which is your mix of the drums. Uh -huh. I got the snare, overhead kick, and guitar. So you didn't send me the reverb on that one. No, but, which is is surprising that usually I think on all the other ones I did. All right, we're back after some technical difficulties. Yeah, this is this is this is this is why we've never done this before. <laughs> We had done this in the past and then decided never again. We forgot and here we are again. <laughs> <laughs> we would never have made a record if we had to do this every week. I know. Yeah, this isn't very good optics. I mean, we did make a record across continents and we're Zoom newbies. So I don't know how this is working out. But where we were, were before I messed things up by trying to open a session, basically I, I thought it sounded what you'd done i thought it sounded like it was heading down the sort of dirty harry route um yeah. and that kind of like drama funk 70s dirty cop for kind sure of thing yeah so yeah and i just and i just like straight away got into it and i think maybe that track was finished in in like four or five hours and ah so killer sent it to you and that was it you know and then, and then kind of like went to i must i worked on it late so maybe I I don't know I can't remember how it worked out but 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 anyway I went to bed and then the next morning you'd you'd text me and and, and I was like oh yeah okay he likes it that's good I'll, I'll work on the I'll work on the next one nice yeah I love it it's um I think if I remember correctly around that time there was a a drum break that I'd done like ten years ago and somehow got to some kids in Japan like breakdance kids and they had a, I found a video of them breakdancing to this drum break. And I just thought like that was, I know nothing about breakdancing, but uh, I was really inspired of, uh, around that time to do things like that. And so this is something that ended up, you know, it's ended up on some breakdance playlists as it's been released. So, yes, and to have that kind of vision and not even explain that to you and you kind of just made it happen with all the strings and the, the bass line is just so killing, so. Yeah, but the bass, the bass. I think the bass was was maybe the first thing I did on the track. Um, uh, I just I just <clears throat> played your guitar in unison, uh, and then and then I was like, okay, so it needs it needs like a B section, right? So so put the B section bass down, and then worked on there's a, there's like a string machine thing on it, and um, there's there's two different guitar bits because you you put some guitar down, then I put like a one note thing uh, which is just playing just, just playing the same note throughout and then some like chank type things and then i put and then i was playing with um with one of the moogs and and had like this almost like acid house kind of sounds you know like really high pitched woo, 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 sort of things through it and then and then i think i put some like i don't know there's some other bits and pieces but but there's not a lot on there mm -hmm. Um, some percussion, there's some there's some congas and stuff on there, um, and some like atmospheric percussion. So the, the drums with the with percussion. Oh, nice. Congas there. Oh, and the, 
on those little blocks. They're so dope, those little blocks. They're, they're little tiny red temple blocks. Okay, yeah. They're um, they're like super cheap. You know, they're not like proper temple blocks. I think they're like tourist things, but they sound really great. Okay. Yeah, I love that. So there's that, and then bass, which is just like a pick bass thing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, it's simple, does the job. And then uh, the guitars, your guitar. What's that? What's that going through? I, actually, I have the pedal right here. Uh, it's just this cheap um, Electro Harmonics Satisfaction. Right. Kind of like supposed to be like the Rolling Stones Satisfaction kind of broken amp sound. Uh, I think that's it. It's just basically this pedal and this reverb box. And um, that's it. Probably going direct, not even an amp. So I didn't have an actual guitar amp until, you know, last year or around this time. I was like, afraid to use it. But uh, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, I think that's it. Just really simple. And, you know, guitar, uh, caveman style guitar, just playing that one note. But yeah, yeah, yeah. A friend, a friend of mine emailed when the when the when the track came out. He emailed me and was like, "What is the fuzz on that guitar? Oh. What pedal have you used?" <laughs> yeah, I think this is like a you know fifty bucks or something. A real really cheap fuzz pedal. It doesn't have really that much sustain, which is my only complaint. But I love it. It's just you know quick and easy. It's just got two knobs. Um, yeah, I'm kind of an electro harmonics fanboy. So there's that. And then there's Yeah, this little part. There, there's the one note. And that's and that's kind of like the, the dirty Harry thing. That was Yeah. You know. Um and then there's another stem. There's only five stems. Then the the last stem is the synths and some strings and bits and pieces. I mean, that, that, that could be like a, a dance tune. Sure, yeah. Is that the Moog? Yeah. And that's a Moog grandmother, is that right? That's the, that's the grandmother, yeah, 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 yeah. What a lovely synth. Which, which, which at this point, at this point, making this record, I didn't really like that synth. Ah. And I was kind of like using it to try and get used to it and right. try and get different sounds out of it. And it, and it worked on, on this stuff. Ah. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's pretty much, I think there's maybe one other synth on the record. The, most of it's the, the grandmother. So on Nova as well, is that that arpeggio? Is that the grandmother? That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's coming from the grandmother, yeah. Nice. Yeah. This... So, um, yeah, is it, there's nothing else to say about, about Mad Mark. I mean, that's it. It's kind of like B-Boy, 70s, dirty cop, banger. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> is that, uh, enough said, right? Yeah, man. And then the next, the next, the next track was it or is Nova, mm -hmm. which which was made much later. Um, yeah, it was one. Was it one of the last tracks that we did? Around that time, I got this uh, really cheap uh, drum set, just a cheap Japanese stencil, what they call stencil kit. And I uh, showed. I think I was showing you the other day. Uh, and. Uh, you sent over Nova and I thought it was, it was perfect because this kit has a really dry sound and uh, the arpeggios just made me think of like something a little more like, I don't know, even like synth punk or something like that. But uh, yeah. this kit would be perfect for it. So some of those later tracks has just more of a dead drum sound. But uh, yeah, Nova, I think I, I have a vague memory of recording this one. I'm pretty sure it's just one take. I heard it listened to it one time and just sat down and closed my eyes and it was like hypnosis. It was so fun to make. Uh, <laughs> That's great. It really was cool. And I had this, like, I think I've told you this before. I had this feeling like I was actually on, you know, in a different continent, different time. It was just really, it was like a, 
it was a uh, altered state recording that and um i'm listening back to that track i can, I can kind of feel it and maybe i'm being a little too um hippy right now but uh yeah it, it definitely is a special one for me because it just kind of flowed out it felt like um it just came you know came out of us in a, in a certain way yeah, yeah no I, I hear you man i hear you. So, some things that you have to work on right continue to work on you know they they, they, they never kind of get to where you want them but when you get these ones that just that just happen yeah they're, they're the best you know um and it feels like you're not working it feels right. like you, you're not you're not trying it just happens it just it just yeah. does it so so um, tell me about how it started for you it was it uh so I, I felt like um i found the session i'm not going to open it in case it cuts out zoom again but oh. this was this was it's telling me that it was created in, in April. Huh. That's got to be wrong. Okay, hang on, hang on. Right. It was August okay. of last year. So nearly, so just over a year ago. Yes. So this was probably one of the later tunes mm -hmm. that we worked on. And it was it was really simple. Again, man, it was like super simple. It was, it was basically just a case of we've done... We'd done maybe like half or, or or three quarters of the record, and I hadn't noticed at the time, but it was starting to it was kind of dark mm -hmm. and and moody, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know. But I thought there needed to be a couple of tunes that were just a little bit lighter, um, and I so I I started the arpeggio on the on the grandmother, and like a, a straight away I thought about it being like a Piero Emiliani track. And there wasn't one. There wasn't one track in particular that that I thought it sounded like. It was just this kind of like vibe of, of Emiliani. Sure. And uh, and then so I put down some again. There's like a string machine thing. And then I let it run for maybe like I don't know how long the track is, but like three minutes or something. I just let the arpeggio run, and then put everything down on top of that arpeggio. I don't think there's a click. There's like it's no. It's not. You know, it's just it's just the synth, synth time. You know, just doing its own thing, um, and then play to that, and then sent it to you, and thought, oh, you know, maybe all of my stuff's now going to get in the way of what of what you're doing, you know, because I don't I don't didn't want to kind of like force you into a, a specific rhythm, but you know what you did was perfect for for the for the track. Yeah, I, I just felt right. It was it was a, like a no brainer. Just. Um... Yeah, like I was saying, I just didn't even have to think about it. Just kind of flowed out, which was really cool. And then with this one, I mean, it's like, again, there's, I don't think there's a lot on it, really. Uh, the stuff that you sent me, I mean, I've got a drum, drums and percussion thing. Uh -huh. Let's see what it, I mean, it doesn't come in for a while, I don't think. Is that reverb right yeah that must be on there i hear it <laughs> <laughs> it's drenched in that great reverb right <laughs> and then i think a bit, bit later on there's, there's, just, there's some congas later Bass is my usual thing of just playing like a very simple kick bass thing. The same, the same, um, the same way I played on every one of these tracks. You know, so it was really simple. It's just like pick bass. It's on a violin, Hofner bass. Nice. Um, and it's going. I can't even remember where it's going. Oh, yeah, yeah I know where it's going. I had, I, I had at the time when we were recording this, um, some old Glen Sounds preamps. Oh, nice. Which have now, which have now gone. But, um, but it was going, it was going direct into their, 
mm. and there was maybe a t- like a touch of compression, but very like nothing really. And then through a tape emulator, okay, just to give nice. it a bit, a bit of grit or whatever. But but that was it, you know. It's that, that was pretty much the way it was for the whole record. Nice. Um, what else is on there? There's there's that arpeggio we keep talking about. So I was thinking like it needed something that was a bit, you know, nice and not too dark. And I think it just like, I, yeah, I just set it running and then just played with the filter. Uh-huh. And it's going through, through, it's not going through the reverb on the synth, it's going through another reverb. I think it's going through this little board behind it, if you can see that, you probably can't see it. It's an old Yamaha board. Just kind of letting it run and making adjustments yeah. as you go to the filter. Exactly, yeah. And there's a key stem, which, oh yeah, the string machine. Uh-huh. Oh. And some chords. was at the point I put this down and that was the point when I was like oh, okay it's, it sounds like, like sort of reminiscent of Emiliani sure uh, well I mean like uh, if you could get close you know yeah 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 absolutely yeah it's definitely got sort of that like library soundtrack kind of thing going on yeah kind of like Italian sounding um and then there's a guitar on there but I can't remember what the guitar is doing skipping through it oh yeah yeah like really super high pitched loads of tremolo nice loads of reverb yeah you know i was going to ask you you listening to the drums what's the ride you're using on that the ride is uh, i don't have it in here but it's a istanbul agap Turk ride 22 inches so it's, right. it's super uh raw finish and and really dry um it kind of only works in the studio like it only works there you go. yeah nice yeah really nice bell it's just a cool symbol I think on there there's there's a Rhodes. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Very cool. That's it. There's nothing else, there's nothing else on there, man. That's great. Yeah, it came out another so simple, nice. Another simple one. Right. It worked out so nicely. Yeah, it's the B-side sleeper. It's two A-sides on that release, I, I, I feel. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed that there's like, because the, the, the single's been out like a week now, so just over a week. Mm-hmm. And I noticed on the, the, like the first few days, everyone was, was like sharing or talking about Mad Mark. Mm-hmm. And now... It seems that everybody that's played it on a radio show is playing Nova. Yeah, right. Which is really interesting. Interesting, huh? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, good. Uh, good sort of dichotomy in between the the sort of the aggressive, like uh, dirty, hairy kind of thing, and then uh, something really quite beautiful. So, yeah, quite nice. It worked out. Worked out nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there's 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 another single coming, which re- remind me why is it called Midnight Baker? 
Oh, there's a, a well, a lot of the song titles are named after places in our respective areas. And uh, Midnight at Baker is just kind of this memory I have of, um, I lived in um, San Francisco, sort of on the west side of San Francisco near a beach, uh, be excuse me, beach called Baker Beach. If I can get that out right. Ah. And we used to go there late at night and do hooligan things. This is when I was in my early 20s. And uh, it was just kind of a regular thing. You'd go out and do whatever in the city and then end the night at this beach because no one would be there and it was really windy and an inhospitable place but super fun for a bunch of young folks to do whatever they want out there so I just felt like it kind of gave the song gave me that vibe of that time when we would go out to this beach late it was usually later than midnight probably <laughs> but <laughs> Also a great place during the day, but at nighttime, it's just a totally different kind of thing. So fun hangout. Okay, so let's hear a bit of it to, to remind me what it sounds like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then that fill comes back again. Right. Right, just hear that. Let's just hear that fill. Yes. I mean, tell me about that fill. Ah, uh, I don't. I don't even know where. To... I don't, even know to begin. I don't know i mean it's funny listening back to I, I i a lot of this is just done off the cuff and i i don't remember what i was thinking or why it makes no sense really uh if i were to try this one again i don't know if i could do it or would do it but i think that's just kind of a using a cross stick i can grab some sticks here it's kind of just doing one of these moves with the uh, stick oh yeah yeah it's kind of like a jazz, you know, jazz vocabulary, but uh, I just thought it sounded good. I did it a few times. And around that time, I was doing that a lot, basically, is the short answer. <laughs> so really cool. <laughs> I got <came> out. <laughs> let, let, me, let me hear it again. Let me hear it again. Here it comes. Yeah. yeah it, it's fun listening back because I don't remember, like, intentionally – it's just kind of in the moment, right? So oh, it's amazing, man. It's amazing, but it's it's that it's that open hi hat at the end of it, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 the moment for me, man. That's that's the special bit there. Ah, I'm glad you like. It. Yeah, man. There's a bass stem. There's drums and percussion, synth and guitar on one stem, which means that I didn't play much synth or much guitar. There's some other bit. There's like a woodwind thing on it, um, but that's it. And some great like uh, block work and ah oh, wow. Oh, the synth guitar does play at the same time. Wow. Yeah, it's not doing anything. It's literally just playing like pulses. Uh -huh. cowbell it's a really high pitched cowbell that's great and there's and there's these Ooh, do, 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 do. these sort of again like just like sound effects instruments uh -huh. they're, they're, I've got a load of um, like touristy djembes you know like you just like tourist pick up sure. and they're all different sizes they're all different different tones and, and, uh -huh. and there's I think there's three on this Maybe two or three on this track. And I usually try and like hold, they're quite small, so I usually try and hold them all together and just hit them with a okay, yeah, with a soft, with a soft mallet. Nice. And then the bass is like 
Dead simple again. And and is that the same uh, for that recording that bass? You use the same preamp that you were talking about. That same preamp, yeah, yeah, yeah. The old Glen Sound ones, yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were lovely preamps, but they had to go. They, they, I bought them really cheap. I mean, I'm always buying and selling gear, but I bought them really cheap, and then they were going on eBay for a ridiculous amount of money. Sure. So um, it's time. So I, I sold them and got something else, you know. But I, I, I kind of regret getting rid of those because they were good. And in fact, I, I looked at some today on eBay. Um, there was a listing that ended today, but. They just went for too much money, man. So, yeah. so I missed out. Yeah. So all the stems are all numbered. Oh, sorry, all the sessions are all just numbered. I know, and and so we named the album tracks after the fact and made things a little. I mean, took away our breadcrumbs. Maybe we should we should have named them just one, two, three, you know, numbered. So I'm having trouble finding. It's, it's kind of a mystery how it all came together because they're just numbers. So. It's, it's dangerous, isn't it? It's dangerous yeah. doing it like this. <laughs> okay, so this was three. Ah, this was the third. So, so we did this. We did this literally just like you would send me something, or I'd send you, and then we'd do that work on that track, and then move on to the next one. Mm. The next one is called. It's called "Lost to the Storm." Lost to the Storm. Okay, which is interesting because uh, it looks like. Lost of the Storm was the last track that we worked on. Ah, yeah. And that became that became the, the album title and um and is on this second single. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, this one. So this oh. one was done mostly on this Casio. This is just like a oh nice circuit bent Casio. My friend put all these switches and toggles on it, and some of them are broken. It's got a theremin on it um that you know oh it looks like it might be out of batteries right now but it's a totally janky piece of machinery you have to kind of bend it and twist it to get it to turn on sometimes but i think the batteries actually died just in time for me to give a demonstration uh but i, <laughs> I believe this one um was the the source of this one of lost to the storm there's kind of this doop 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 kind of thing this is Which like Casio a, is that? It's a Casio Tone MT46. It's just like a child. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, just heavily modded, and it's a really terrible instrument. It sounds awful, and I can't believe it works so well on this one. Uh, man, I love those. Yeah, I love them. So, so let's let, let me hear it because. Um, I can't remember what it sounds like. So this is... Yeah, 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 yeah. Great stuff. So that, the, the synth chord at the beginning, that's you, isn't it? That's on that Casio. Yeah. And I think the melody too. Yeah, my Casio has had the same batteries for over 10 years. I don't know how it works. It's possessed, but the thing has a lot of problems. I'm going to uh, toggle the sound so you can hear it. Uh, the idea with this one is it's just a five note scale and I think it's based on uh, like an Ethiopian scale that a friend of mine had showed me and I just kind of learned it on piano. And it's really just that, it's just, you know, five note scale and, and play it as a chord and then that was kind of the basis for it. I just thought it sounded cool, a little, a little mysterious kind of sound. So yeah. Fun to have just something that's like kind of a child's toy that I've had for a long time. A friend of mine circuit bent it and really glad that, you know, I think this was one of the last songs on the record that we recorded. And um, it was the last one. Last one. 
I think I sent you uh, the Casio and drums. And then you added some bass and some nice. Well, I managed to open the session on this one. Um, I... And with this, with this, I took your drums, which you sent over. Um, you sent over everything as usual. So you sent me, you sent me a drum bus, uh, effects return. You sent me an Elvis mic, two overheads on this one. Ah, okay. Were you using two overheads all the time? I can't remember. I don't know. I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes just one and minimal, and sometimes two. Just depends. Okay, so I tell you, I can tell you now. I didn't use either of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all that, all that effort, and you just threw them away. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I didn't even put them in the session. All <laughs> I've got is is the kick drum, the uh, the effects return, and the drum bus. So nice. I'm basically using I'm basically using your mix that you did, and then just adding a bit more kick drum to it. Cool. Uh, and and a ton more reverb. Nice. And then your Casio part. Um, is is everything that you sent bar one melodic phrase, um, and I took that out because on the last on the third chord that you play, just I I put the um, I put the chord through the space echo, and just let that run, and then that actually runs the space echo runs pretty much through the track after that. Incredible. It kind of comes up and down, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's sort of in the. I wonder if you can hear this. Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is your this is your chord with the um, with the space echo. Coming up now. Nice. And then that's just running like that until the next chord and then in the meantime there's some talking drum oh yeah there's a pro one oh. i had it for a minute so that's the synth on this i forgot about that Yeah, it's another one that I kind of regret getting rid of, actually. Cowbell. And um, this really cool, this Ganza, which is really cool. And then there's an acoustic guitar that comes up a bit. Yes, yeah, it's, it's this is quite interesting. This is um, the only one that's got acoustic guitar on it, and it's because I bought this acoustic guitar at the time of recording this track. So that's the only reason why it ended up on here. Uh. And I think I think like with a lot of the other stuff on it, it's like two notes. Uh. With the pro one and the bass. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. And then there's a couple of other, there's a couple of other bits on there. There's some string bits. Um it's got this little, which I love, this thing, which I just dug out, ah. which is, which is kind of like, a, it's kind of like a guero, but, but it's not, um, made from like, oh, nuts or something. Oh, okay. Like like seed cool nuts or something. That yeah, is cool. Yeah. What do you, what's the origin of that? Is that African or? I have no idea. Sean Lee, a friend of mine, bought this for me. Wow. Um, 
he bought one for himself and he got he got me one and it's still got the price underneath it. Ah. Um, but there was a, there was like a famous shop in Camden that was closing down. Ah. And he, he'd had loads of stuff out of that shop and, and he kind of went there one last time before it closed. Nice. He got a few goodies and, and, and got that. But and that's that I just love this. I think it's brilliant because there's no, there's nothing that really sounds like it, you know. It's just, right. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's it really on, on that track. I mean it's it it's it's probably more produced and more full of sounds than than any other. It's it's got the um it's got the zither, zither sound on it, if I can get that out. Right. Um, that is the, the one that my friend sampled and sent me. And I that's see. quite processed. And then there's an auto harp on there as well, which is just plucking notes on the auto harp rather than playing chords. Aside from the, the two or three synthesizers that, that's on this one, it's a lot of percussion. I mean, it seems like a lot of the record is that there's just a, a ton of like texture from, you know, either like kind of toy, like a, like you, like you're saying, tourist kind of drums and bells and whistles, just really fills it out that way, which is really cool. I hadn't realized um, that previously. You got, like all, all those sounds, like people people don't people don't generally use them because they're like cheap or you know like they kind of like dismiss certain right. instruments. Um, and <laughs> like I've got a room full of them because they, like they do one thing really well. Yeah, but. They have to be used in the right context at the right time. Um, sure. But this kind of, because because this is so kind of like, you know, when we were talking about about this record originally, we had like a very loose idea of it being kind of sarky, kind of library, you know, it's like sat in that late 60s to mid 70s sort of sound. Mm -hmm. And then it, it kind of like ventured out from there. But But a lot of those tracks that we both like, have got really unusual weird sounds that might only happen once right. or twice but it's like what what is that and where does that come from uh -huh. and and all these little cheap things i mean i'm looking around to try and find something else that's that's on there but i just kind of like atmospheric texture yeah. type things definitely um but it's none of them are expensive and none of them are hard to find mm -hmm. and serve a great purpose right there yeah so that yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. And then, and then after that, after that, there's another ten tracks, but we're not going to talk. No, there's not ten tracks. There's another eight tracks, but we're not going to talk about those. Well, then we'll save that for the next Zoom, uh, Zoom party. Yeah. Back by popular demand. Right. <laughs> Zoom the encore. <laughs> cool. <laughs> We've already done that four times tonight. Right. <laughs> Part eleven. <laughs> Three Zoom meetings per track. <laughs> We'll be on Zoom for the rest of the year talking about this. Cool. Exactly. It's going to take longer to do these Zooms than it did to make the record. <laughs> Zoom, sponsor us if you're watching. And then, and then nobody's going to watch it. Right. <laughs> right. It's a labor of love. <laughs> what was the drum set? What was it? What the kit that you used uh, i can grab a uh, part of it here so the earlier tracks that we recorded is uh it's actually pretty nice it's my usual kit it's a uh 1964 ludwig and it's actually not here right now it's packed up but um and then about halfway through making the record i got this it's a really cheap pearl 68 pearl I'm trying to get the badge so no bottom heads, just taped up. It sounds terrible. It you know, I got it for really cheap. But <laughs> it's just awful. I love it. It's just perfect. It's just dead sounds and um, bigger drums, like a little more rock. But I think for future recordings, we'll probably use a bit more of this because it just has such a, a perfect sound. Almost that like, like less jazzy than the Ludwig and this is just a little more of a library kind of sound so uh yeah great drum set and I've, I've never seen I've never seen that pole logo before yeah this is this is 60s you know 68 I don't know if you could see it there we go um amazing yeah these are just cheap drum sets made in Japan there are knockoffs of uh like American brand like Gretsch Slingerland Ludwig uh 
and then they would just put them out as probably Philippine Luan wood, something like that, you know. Uh, but a great kit. Um, yeah, so maybe for the next record, we can talk about uh, what budget <laughs> materials we're going to use. Like, I think I think I forgot a few that are in this room that we can use for the next one. <laughs> It's, I've now got a quest to find the most budget thing that we can use. <laughs> We're going to have a contest. 